Welcome to this Ranger Spring Training Live Interactive. Welcome to Rangers Interactive. I'm your host, Paul Tubbs. Spring training is in full effect, of course, for the Cactus and Grapefruit League as Major League Baseball prepares for the upcoming season. Loss at first and last for the Texas Rangers coming into the 2019 season. Most of the new being on the new faces on the field, and one of those faces is first-time manager, new Rangers manager, Chris Woodward. Here to break all this down is our very own Tobin McDuff, who is following all the action there at Rangers Spring Training in Surprise, Arizona. Joining him, a very special guest, pre- and post-game host, Rangers broadcaster Jared Sandler. And thanks for joining us, gentlemen. And we'll start things off with Chris Woodward, obviously a, a new and fresh face with the Rangers organization. And uh, just kind of talk about the vibe that's going on in the Rangers locker room after having Chris kind of indoctrinated into the organization. Absolutely, you bet, Paul. And uh, Jared, thanks a lot for joining us again. And uh, Chris Woodward era is underway uh, with the Texas Rangers. What are your initial impressions of Woodward? It's a very energetic guy. It seems really authentic. And, you know, I think one of the big differences that the Rangers are trying to accomplish is communication. And, you know, whether it's communicating with the players just day to day or communicating information, especially some of the analytical information that some of these guys maybe aren't as familiar with. And, doing it in a way that they grasp and they know how to use it. You know, it's one thing to just see, oh, I have, you know, this number of this stat or whatever, but when you know what it means and how it can make you better, then you're going to grow. And, and I think that's one of the big goals of this staff, and Chris Woodward's obviously a big part of that. And it seems like what he was telling us today, there's just a, an incredible communication between him and his assistant coaches as well. Absolutely, and that's the key. You know, they work as a team within a team, and, uh, you know, he addressed having Don Wakamatsu on staff and having Jace Tingler on staff, two guys who interviewed for the position that he received. And, uh, you know, the camaraderie that those three have and then just the staff in general is really impressive. And, uh, you know, Louis Ortiz is the hitting coach. Juan Rangel is the, the or Julio Rangel is the, the pitching coach and the assistants and then the, the people who just fill out the staff. Uh, it's it's a you know, as a, in general, a pretty energetic group. And uh, just talking to the players, they're super pumped to be here and, and be working uh, with and, and I guess for this coaching staff. And yeah, Paul, I mean, the atmosphere definitely in the clubhouse, it's light. And not to say that it was not loose last year, but it, it definitely is a lighter feeling in the clubhouse, Paul. Now, one of the other people that is not there any longer is, of course, Adrian Beltre, a guy that has been a staple for so long for the Rangers. And I, what's, what's kind of been the mood here? Who is going to be the one that takes the forefront and really takes the lead in this? Will it, will it be Elvis, or is there a surprise player out there that maybe we hadn't been talking about? Oh, that, that's a good question. We were, I was actually uh, talking to some of the players today and asking who the grandpa in, in the <laughs> locker room is, and, and a lot of them were saying, you know, Elvis or, you know, or, or Valquez. But, um, um, you know, with Adrian Beltre gone, the leadership role is definitely there for the taking. Do you see Elvis filling that leadership role? Yeah, I, I think Elvis, you know, five, six years ago when Michael Young left the organization, people looked at him and kind of thought this is his team. He, you know, he wasn't old, but... He was, you know, had been experienced, had been to two World Series, was kind of an up-and-coming player still, and I don't know that he was ready for that then. I, I think he's ready for that now. Now, you know, leadership doesn't just come from one player, and it didn't come from one player when Adrian was here. He was just the guy that everyone turned to, but I, I think it will be a joint effort. I think having Chin Su Chu still a part of the mix will help, uh, and then you have a guy like Hunter Pence. If he does make the team, that will obviously make a huge difference. Edison Volquez on the pitching side of thing, a veteran presence there, Sean Kelly in the bullpen. They got a number of people, but the guy who's going to be the face of it all, the guy who you're going to go to when things aren't going well, who's going to be speaking for the team, that's going to be Elvis. And I do think he is much more prepared for that now than maybe he was a few years ago. And as for Adrian Beltre, I mean, nobody can replace the future Hall of Famer. But uh, as Ruble Cabrera appears to be in line to get most of those starts at third base, how do you see him filling in there? Well, you know, he's got a, a good track record. A guy who's been an all-star before. Last year he was really, really good with the Mets uh, and then got traded and, and just never quite uh, carried over that magic uh, with Philadelphia. But he's a switch hitter, and the Rangers lost a switch hitter in Jerickson Profar. For this lineup, that's valuable because it is such a lefty-heavy lineup, or can be at times. Uh, you know, he's got really good hands at third base. You know, 
to expect him to replace Adrian defensively, even at Adrian's old age last year, still probably isn't fair. But I do think that as Drupal will, will bring something to this offense, I mean, he's probably going to be a guy who hits in the middle of the order. And so I think from that standpoint, uh, he will be able to, to kind of help fill the shoes of Adrian Beltre this year. And like you said, he's a former All-Star who uh, is capable of having over 50 extra base hits in, in a season for the Rangers, which would be huge. And uh, he's, he's likely a, about a 270 career hitter. So uh, definitely a great addition in the offseason, I think, for the Texas Rangers, Paul. One of the things also that kind of comes up too is the first base position. That's something, you know, it looked like Guzman had more of a hold on that towards the latter part of the season. Is, is that kind of what we are going to expect to see moving forward? Yeah, I, I think we're going to see Guzman at first base quite a bit this year, and I know that the infielders love him because he is a huge target. <laughs> you know, the, the, the moniker of Condor didn't just come out of nowhere. I mean, he's, he spreads his wings, and it's really tough to miss him. Uh, he is a bit of a safety net uh, for the infielders at first. And, you know, in terms of handling his own business at first, he's so good at that. Uh, you know, they've worked on, for a guy who's so big, long legs, long arms, mechanically staying sound and keeping things simple, uh, he will be the first baseman on opening day as long as he's healthy. And I think the hope is that he's the first baseman all the way through the season and, and maybe for years to come. Uh, you know, what's so interesting to me about Ronald Guzman is as big of a body is, he's never been a huge power hitter. Well, last year he hit more home runs at the major league level than any season uh, in the minor leagues that he's had to date and it, it shows that he's still growing and you know a lot of people say that power's the last thing to come well these days sometimes power is the first thing to come for hitters and batting average is the last thing to come but for Ronald Guzman I think it might apply he's so good at hitting the ball to all fields if he can continue to improve against lefties I think that power will come because he's certainly got the power body and you know defensively you don't, you don't realize how important it is to have a good defensive first baseman until you lose one. This organization's had a few with Mark Teixeira and Mitch Moreland here recently. Uh, Ronald Guzman kind of picks up where those guys left off. He's really special defensively. He is, and you, you definitely have to have those contact hitters in the lineup as well, Paul. One of the things, obviously, with this Texas Rangers team, you expectations. Are there really any kind of set expectations for this organization? Because you've made so many changes, uh, both on the field and off the field, uh, what do you what do you hope to see? That's a good question, and that's a question that I've been posing to a lot of the players in the clubhouse about the expectations. And out, outside of the locker room, there aren't expectations across the country for the Texas Rangers this year. So, uh, what do you think the expectations are realistically for this team? You know, I think amongst the players, I think they're definitely approaching this with a chip on the shoulder type of situation. They feel like new staff. Uh, new beginnings and you know the young guys especially feel like hey this is now kind of our team uh, even if they're not the face of it like Elvis is uh, but the, the Gallows, De Shields, Mazars, Guzmans of the world they feel like hey this is this is kind of uh, our team and, and we're kind of the future of this and we want to set the tone right now they want to set the tone this year now I think big picture the realistic expectation is for this team to compete. But I don't think anyone's going to look at this year and say, well, if they don't make the playoffs, it's not a successful year. I think the goal is to continue to see development from the young guys. And if that results in a, a wild card berth or, hey, surprising the, the baseball world and winning the division, that's awesome. Then they're ahead of schedule. Uh, but if these guys show development, if, if a guy like Gallo takes a step forward, if Rugi takes a step forward, Mazzara, and maybe they come up a few games short, I don't think anyone in the front office is going to look at this year as a disappointment. I think it all hinges on the development of the young guys and if they can continue to prepare themselves to, to not just win for one year, but they talk about opening a window. Uh, you want to win for multiple years. You want to put yourself, your organization, in a position to win for multiple years. And I think that they feel like this year, even if it's not one that fans look back on and say, hey, you know, remember 2019, what a great year when we went to the playoffs. I think they feel like this will be a really important year in setting all of that up. And any success this year is going to be dependent upon the health of the starting pitching staff, don't you think? Absolutely. you got three guys who haven't really consistently pitched in the major leagues since uh, 2017, and in the case of Drew Smiley, 2016. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, if, if those guys stay healthy, then, you know, maybe this team does hang around and, and surprise people, and maybe they are playing beyond 162. Uh, but depth is going to be a, a big thing for the Rangers in building their roster just to protect those guys. Shelby Miller, 
uh, who did pitch a little bit last year before things just physically weren't where they needed to be. Drew Smiley, we mentioned, and Edison Volquez, and of course Lance Lynn and Mike Miner rounding out that starting five. It could be a really good group, but the health is going to be a big part of it. And we heard uh, Chris Woodward talking about the bullpen this morning. It's likely that, uh, I mean, there's going to be seven or eight on the roster at the start of the season, but that's just going to be a rotating door throughout the season, don't you think? A lot of young guys are going to get opportunities. Yeah, I think so, and, and they're going to have some really tough decisions. That's probably going to be the biggest challenge for the front office and Chris Woodward and his staff to – uh, build here when the team leaves surprise because there's some decisions that if, if you make uh, you know you choose this guy or that guy then you lose the guys you don't choose not just from the big league team but from the organization and so you lose some depth uh, you know whether it's a rule five guy like Jordan Romano a guy like Connor Sadzik who's out of options if those guys aren't on the big league team they're not in the organization and now all of a sudden what is perceived as an area where there is some pretty strong depth in the bullpen that now gets dwindled a little bit uh, if, if those decisions maybe don't favor those guys. So some tricky decisions that are going to have to be made. Guys are certainly going to be fighting for spots, but I do think the bullpen will be a really, really good group. And for the first time in a while, I think the Rangers are going to go into the year with a closer and end the year with that same closer with Jose Leclerc. He's a really special young pitcher. So there you see there's question marks, but not in the closer role. So that's a good thing. <laughs> well, definitely. And of course, we're going to have more from Texas Rangers spring training camp here in the next day or so actually coming up on Wednesday. We'll talk a little bit on the rotation some more. We'll also talk as far as the outfield position because I know there's a lot of positions to kind of plug and play and who's going to win those starting jobs. So Tobin, Jared, thank you so much for your time. And of course, we will get back with you guys here on Wednesday. Thanks a lot, Paul. And that is going to do it, of course, today for Rangers Live Interactive. Make sure you join us again on Wednesday when we talk about the rotation. We talk about the final season, the ballpark, and just what the outfield is going to look like moving forward. For Tobin McDuff and Jared Sandler, I'm Paul Tubbs, and we'll see you on Wednesday.